people used to say, oh, that person is a born salesperson or that person can sell, you know, anything to anyone. And I used to say, you know, you have to work at that too. It, yeah, maybe you've got traits and characteristics embedded in you that make you perhaps better at being a communicator, but this is not just a gift. You do work at it like anything else. If you're a CPA, you don't just become one. If you're a, a lawyer, it doesn't just get handed to you. And, you know, if you develop a career in the travel industry, it's it's not an automatic. We work hard at this. You got to take it seriously. Your relationships are absolutely paramount. Welcome aboard. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelt. The Modern Travel Agent Podcast starts now. Thank you for joining us on the Modern Travel Agent Podcast, where our mission is to help educate and empower travel agents so they can better serve their clients and grow their businesses. On this episode, we speak with Todd Curlick, who is the Senior Director with Sunwing Travel Group. Sunwing Travel Group is a 17,000 employee vertically integrated travel company, which means they have brands at the different levels of tour operator, airline, hotel, destination management, and then of course, retail, which sells virtually all of the above. We do a lot of business with Sunwing Travel Group, but the majority of it is done through the resort brand, Blue Diamond Resorts. Blue Diamond Resorts is the sponsor of this episode. And while we discuss quite a bit about the properties towards the end of this podcast, I did want to take a quick second to say that if you're an agent who books all-inclusive travel to Mexico and the Caribbean, and you're not at least considering Blue Diamond Resorts for your clients, I highly recommend that you check them out. They have 44 properties in 10 different countries throughout Mexico and the Caribbean, and they consistently deliver a great product at a great price. I had the opportunity to stay at the adult-only Worldton Chic Suites Cancun just last week, and the biggest highlight of the property tends to be the rooftop cabana lounge located on the 18th floor. But for me, the most surprising thing was just the general energy at the resort. On one night, they had a magic show, which I'm not entirely sure what the ideal demographic is for a magic show. It's probably not me, but it was you know lighthearted and fun and entertaining. But as soon as they finished the show, they cleared everything off and turned the stage into a dance floor, uh, which immediately became packed. And it was incredible to see because after everything that's happened over the past year and a half, you had a dance floor full of people of all different types of backgrounds from all over the world, basically just having fun and enjoying each other's company. It was honestly one of the coolest things I've ever seen at a resort. So if you have clients that are looking for an adult only kind of lively party spot, the Royal 10 Chic Suites Cancun is a great option. If you want to learn more about their properties, you can check out bdagentrewards.com. And without further ado, our discussion with Todd Curlick, a senior director of Sunwing Travel Group. Todd, thank you so much for joining us in the Modern Travel Agent Podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on. Awesome. Really good to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. So to get us started, can you share with us a little bit about your background and uh, how you got into the travel industry? So sure. I mean, I think uh, my my, um, my my journey might uh, not have been the most traditional, but I think a lot of us uh, probably find ourselves uh, stumbling into new career paths and Sometimes we look back and say, "How did we get there?" I think I'm one of those uh, one of those guys. I didn't uh, particularly uh, uh, endeavor to be in this industry at a young age, particularly. Nor did I, I go to school specifically for this. Uh, I just uh, had a keen interest back in high school. Uh, I was a, a bit of a grew up in uh, in uh, in Canada and uh, used to do a lot of winter sports like uh, skiing and things like that and. Uh, I remember uh, just in 10th grade, really, uh, kind of a lot of of us were thinking about getting a weekend away and maybe getting a ski tour trip going and nobody was really doing anything about it. And I just, you know, I kind of, my, my, my segue was really just rented a, got a, a, a quote to go to, to Quebec for a, a ski trip, got a bus and some hotel booked and, you know, just did a little costing and I started selling little ski weekends out of my locker. And the first year we did about, I don't know, but I did about 90 people. Of course, I did this just all on the side, probably without proper, <laughs> I think it was just kind of like a, a little bucket shop that I was trying running, but it was really just out of just trying to get away with my buddies and friends from schools. And it really quite grew. And, and by the second year, I was in 11th grade and uh, it started to get quite busy. We were doing, um, you know, a lot of people were interested in getting away for these, as you know, in high school, people like to, you know, there's like the grad trip, the famous grad trip where, 
there's a lot of uh, a lot of fun things involved usually with that. But uh, I ended up in my second year in the eleventh grade. It got a little bit large, and I got some advice from a from a high school principal that. Uh, essentially uh, got word that I was peddling trips out of my locker without any sort of uh, seller of travel license or a really ability to, to properly, you know, probably even legally <laughs> have these. So gave me some great advice to maybe hook up with a local tour company or travel agency. And it just at that time, it was, it was just really timing. And there was an organization, a, a company that was expanding into this uh, ski tour industry around that time. And this company was well established in the educational tour field. And I just, somehow uh, through uh, an acquaintance hooked up with a, a company and they said that this was uh, a segment, you know, the college and university trips, uh, college university and even uh, high school senior trips was a, an emerging, uh, you know, not, not only ski trips, but just, you know, obviously, uh, you know, sun trips and things like that. So really for me, um, I just got jumped into association with this company and really struck up a part-time gig, if you will. And uh, by the third year, my senior year of high school, grade, the 12th grade, uh, yeah, we were, I was running around uh, all parts of the city that I live in Toronto, a large city, and we were starting to really, you know, get upwards 50 to 60 bus loads of, 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 of seniors going to trips and uh, not only ski trips, but other trips too. So I did that for a few years. So my segue was really by default, I found myself in this industry. Um, after uh, high school, I, I really continued to stay connected over the next four years uh, in a part-time basis. And sometimes it was even full-time. And it was just then that we started to, to grow and expand. I ended up uh, finding some other partners at that time and started uh, a spring break travel company. Uh, and we started doing charter flights to, to Cancun and to different places seasonally, of course, over a period of, you know, maybe a four week window in February and March during these periods from large gateways. And we expanded a little bit into the United States and, so that was my segue into a really, and uh, we did that for about seven years before going into a mainstream tour operator as a junior product buyer. And that's kind of where I say I really arrived. My most fun was way back then, but that was not a sustainable, uh, you, can't, you, you can't party your whole life. <laughs> did, did you come from an entrepreneurial um, family? You know, no, I really didn't. Uh, I really didn't. But my parents were quite, um, quite supportive. They were about balance, you know, with athletics, with sports, with trying new things. It wasn't all about did you do your homework? Because usually I'd say yes, even if I didn't. So I was not perhaps the best, uh, the best academic. So I tried to realize that uh, maybe at a young age, got, I, 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 when I was doing this, going back to it, a lot of my buddies were, you know, friends were working part time, had great little jobs, you know, McDonald's or they were working at the or a lumberyard. I remember a couple of guys. And then I said, you know, I, I want to do something different. And that's really kind of why I chose when I realized that I could start making money doing it. And typically what I did was the entrepreneurial part came kind of when I realized that as I was selling these trips um, to, to people directly. So it really wasn't B2B at the time. It was me just selling to students. I would start to, you know, offer students a percentage. So I would get group leaders at different schools around my neighborhood and, and you know, and, and, and I would say, okay, well, if you get 20 people, you'll get yourself a free trip. And they, this is great. So that person ended up doing kind of the legwork and collecting deposits and we would create flyers. And so again, the entrepreneurial thing didn't really come from, I guess it came a little bit from my family, but we weren't directly involved. I think they just supported anything we did. And my brother and I, we, you know, just uh, tried new things. Although I didn't always go about it the right way, but I finally got it right. <laughs> and what would you say, um, you know, that sort of that mentality of, um, you know, just try it and sort of figure out the details later. What was your mm -hmm. biggest sort of takeaway or learning in, in that process? You know, you know, we often hear a lot of quotes, right? The, the one that resonates for me is if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. And I would say, when I first heard that, I'm like, that's ridiculous. And I, you think about it, it makes a whole lot of sense. And if you're happy and content with that, that's great. For me, you know, it's nothing ventured, nothing gained. Back then, we did try different things. We did uh, whitewater rafting excursions in the northern parts of, you know, in the lake regions. And we thought that was going to be a great with camping weekends and, and things like that. Well, we turned out, we tried doing that. And then we realized that there actually were operators already doing that directly to the people. They would just sell directly to them and come for the weekend. And we were trying to package it with, with transportation and things like that. And we lost some money. We tried. So, you know, but again, if you don't try it, nothing's going to happen. So 
you know, you could just do what you always did. But I mean, for, you don't you don't try something new. It's just like this industry. I think we see people, you know, agents today, you know, with agents listening today, and they're probably reinventing kind of their client base, you know, recovery period, maybe we'll cover that as we move forward. But I think a lot of people will be getting into different sectors, you know. Absolutely. Um, you know, being a travel agent, you have to balance sales as well as service. Um, and both you have to you have to do well in order to be successful. Um, regarding you know sales, what what do you think the most uh, important characteristics are for a great salesperson? So you know that's a really good question because I I, I used to think you know I've done reach I've worked in the retail trade. I t- I talked about going into being a junior buyer at a tour operator. I also spent some time in between learning the retail travel trade. Um, I was a travel agent for well over a year. And it was, and it, 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 I learned more in that year of, 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 of learning the systems and knowing how to, to talk to the clients and, and really closing on business was a lot of fun for me. But, you know, you know, sales itself, like people used to say, oh, that person is a born salesperson or that person, you know, can, you know, can sell, you know, anything to anyone. And I used to say, you know, I, I don't resent that comment, but I don't think people quite understand. That's not a, you know, you have to work at that too. It, yeah, maybe you've got traits and characteristics embedded in you that make you perhaps better at being a communicator, but this is not just a gift you do work at it like anything else. If you're a CPA, you don't just become one. If you're a a lawyer, it doesn't just get handed to you. And, you know, if you develop a career in the travel trade, travel industry, it's, it's not an automatic. We work hard at this. And, you know, for me, a sales characteristic, it boils back down to really being an effective communicator. You know, I was a Toastmaster when I was in in my teens because I wanted to learn how to maybe effectively communicate, to speak in front of groups. These are things that I did Um, on my own, just because I felt that that was the area that I was going to be best in, you know, working, you know, with, 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 with people and doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah, I think that sales is, 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 is really, you know, you got to take it seriously. There's none of this, you know, your relationships are absolutely paramount and, 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 and integrity and honesty and all that stuff. It it, it goes without saying, if you, if you're going to be effective, you know, aside from, you know, just trying to pull the trigger, you know, on, on, on a sale, if that's, that's the intent. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen repeated anyway. You know, your repeated clientele and you gentlemen know exactly um, running an, an operation like you do. It's, it's all about reputations. So, yeah. That's kind of what I feel. That, that's so great that you mentioned that sales is as a craft, something that you hone, you know, something that you have to work on and get better at. You know, for, for those agents that maybe you know, say they're they're not naturally born or have that whatever that you know that make them sort of inclined to mm-hmm. discuss and build relationships and sort of hone that craft, mm-hmm. what do you think those agents can do to kind of to kind of get better in that area? Great question. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. So, you know, we've got people that we deal with in our daily lives, family members and friends, and, you know, maybe to, maybe you're shopping to buy a new car right now or a new, a, a new sofa. I mean, we, we make purchases every day and we deal with people. So Agents that may not be comfortable um, presenting or perhaps don't think that they have that kind of um, that that the personal, you know, ability to to, to connect with people, you know, that will come with time. And you know why? Because the knowledge that you gain becomes the power that you have. And you know what? When you have experience, I, I can recall even my mother once telling me, talked about, you know, you know, you know, academics and, and, and having a balance between, you know, education and practical and, you know, things like that. If, if you that nothing beats practical experience. So you can be the smartest individual on the face of the earth. And yes, now there are some exceptions. I'm not a nuclear scientist and I'm not saying that these individuals are not unbelievably needed and required and I want them to do exactly what they continue to do. But when we talk about what we do, the more you learn, you can't sell something if you, you can, you can try to sell something you know nothing about. But if you specialize in an area, for example, at Modern, I think you guys sell all kinds of trips and expeditions. And, you know, one of your, an area that you're focused on is all-inclusive travel. And I think that probably right now, if I said to you, you've got, you know, who are your key agents that have, you know, the knowledge, you know, that if you had a friend that said, hey, can you connect me with one of your counselors? 
right away, one of you, you know, you're going to have some, oh, I got the perfect agent that'll walk you through it if you're interested in Costa Rica all inclusives or whatever. And I think that you can't take away knowledge. I mean, it, you own it. We own it. So even if you don't have the best, I don't know, when they talk about traits of speakers with vocal variety and body language and eye contact and all the tricks of that kind of a trade, you don't need to have all of that. If you've got the knowledge, you've got the ability just to connect with someone and say, look, I think I got what you're looking for. And this is why I've been there. I know people that have, I've checked it out. This is a great supplier that we have you with. I mean, it's not like you're reinventing the wheel. People will, people will react to that knowledge. What advice um, would you give to you know, a travel agent, maybe it's a single person shop where they're starting to see some success and, and they're, they're, they're looking to, to grow and, and possibly hire, um, you know, starting off, it was difficult for us to find kind of the right, right person. So from a hiring standpoint, what advice would you give to, to an agent uh, looking to grow in that aspect? Well, if it's an agent that's looking to grow, and it's, as you mentioned, if we're talking about perhaps a small kind of independent agent that has, obviously, they would likely have an area already of, let's say, somewhat expertise or an area that they kind of focus on. If they're, if, if they're, if they're looking to grow their business, and I see that you're seeing post-pandemic that a lot of like corporate, um, corporate travel agents are now trying to look into all-inclusive space, uh, meeting planners are looking to get into leisure. So if there is an agent that, an agency that's looking to grow, uh, I, I think that it would be interesting to take a look at other areas that perhaps that's not their biggest strength in order to branch out. Not that you can be all things to all people because you can't, but I think that just other areas of opportunity. So if this particular agency is, let's say, large into just all-inclusive uh, land-based vacations, perhaps it could be something else. I mean, we're gonna, we know that cruising is going to come back in a big way. It may not be as quick, but it's still going to be very, very pronounced when it uh, during the recovery period. But it doesn't even have to be that. It could be European expeditions. It could be, um, lo- you know, luxury uh, motor coach tours across Europe. It could also be just adventure-based travel. There's a there's a lot out there, right? So maybe identify with somebody bringing in somebody that might have interests to grow, not just complement, but also grow a sector. Um, meetings and events. There's all kinds of things like. I think that if this particular travel agency you're referring to, maybe they do 80%, 90% leisure. Well, maybe they've never really probed that clientele to say, hey, like, do you have family members that do 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 other kinds of travel? Oh, I didn't know you did adventure travel. So then you can gain more education through webinars and FAMs and things like that. And again, going back to knowledge, it all goes back to the product knowledge. It really, it, 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 it points goes back to that. So if that agent's looking to bring in um, a junior agent, a new agent, be prepared to spend time, resources, and and an investment in that person's growth and development, because that, again, is not automatic. It's, you're not just going to say, you do this and you do that. When you're a customer facing person, and assumably this new position would be, um, you got to invest in that employee. You really have to have the support mechanisms in place. And it doesn't matter if the person has a ton of experience or not. Sure, you'd like to get people to experience, but as you highlighted earlier, it's not always so easy. It's not, you know, it's it's it does it it, it it's great if you can find someone that way, but take a chance on someone and spend the time, and it likely won't let you down. Yeah, I hear a lot of times um, agents may say that, you know, I just want to find someone. Uh, I just want to clone myself. I want to clone myself and find someone that that can do exactly what I can do. And um, the danger in that is that you're not willing to give up, you know, uh, control. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's important, you know, as a leader to lead, um, not manage, you know, lead and show them the way. So um, I'm curious your take on this. Uh, How can travel agency owners set up their agents for success as far as leadership. Yeah, and I suggest this is a trait in all industries uh, where people grow a business. Let's say in many cases, these are small businesses. They may not be small numbers, but let's be honest, most travel agencies are generally viewed as small businesses. Uh, It's hard to let go. It's hard to let go because you have grown a business um, and you've held yourself accountable to yourself. And you've been able to grow these businesses and to get to that next level, you just have to come to the realization that you have to place trust in other individuals in order to grow. That's very difficult to do when you've been the reputation behind a brand 
And sometimes if that's enough for you, perfect. But if you are looking to grow, be prepared. And my, my I would always say job shadowing, uh, role shadowing is a terrific way to, to bring somebody into the fold. Um, I typically, when I bring on, um, uh, I've had some growth in my department over the last several years and something that I chose to do more out of I, uh, lack of time at the beginning was, listen, I'm going to blind copy you on all my interactions with our clients for the next month. And sometimes I did it even before the individual start date. Like if you were starting in two weeks and you had just resigned or something like that from a previous employer, you're moving or doing something, don't respond don't comment, just be a sponge. And, you know, sometimes people take for granted that, you know, we answer and we go about our business in a certain way each day, and we've been doing it for a while. And we can't assume that everybody is at that point in their development that they even know how particularly maybe to answer a certain situation with a client or how you use terminology or wording. And, you know, uh, I so I do that. And the shadowing part. So I would say to an independent owner, you know, if you don't necessarily want to let go right away, just have them involved in your meetings, have them copy them in on things just so they can listen and read and absorb how you carry it. Because if you are going to entrust that individual uh, to represent your brand, then I get it. You're, you know, it's, it's, it's painful sometimes because you really do, you know, the, the, there's a micromanagement element of agency owners, but also in small business too. And, you know, it's a pride thing too. Oh no, I can't find anybody to do. And then they'll be like, oh, that person will never let go. You know, it's this, it's a funny thing, but it can be done. It can be done. And, you know, I, I still say personality, like, you know, bringing people in from outside a particular industry, if you just have a good feeling about someone, if you're willing to put that time in, but again, Tim, you said it, we can't answer uh, that question really, unless we really know the specific individuals uh, that we're, we're referring to, because sometimes some people just never want to let go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that's such a good idea that the shadowing, I mean, it, it really does work to sort of give them the opportunity to see the process and, you know, f- sort of flip it from the side of the agent, let's say, who's shadowing, who's just kind of watching, how do they maximize their takeaway? Like, what should they be doing in that process to make sure that they're really learning as much as possible? I would say really trying to absorb it in its entirety. If you're talking about including, let's say it's a quote, back and forth between the high from a client that says, you know, hey, Dave, I was thinking about going to Costa Rica with my family. Do you have any suggestions? You know, it could be something super simple like that. And it's just the way it's, you know, just really absorb it. Don't just go over it. For that person that's doing the shadowing, don't just say, ah, you know, take, there's steps involved here. You don't go for the kill. You don't go right away. Yeah, I got this deal and it expires at midnight. You give me your credit card today. You'll see how professionals don't operate that. And uh, you will just so try to pay attention to the sequence that leads up to, you know, maybe perhaps a phone, an actual phone call or a consultation in person. You know, I think sometimes people glance through this kind of stuff thinking like, oh, I can do this. It's, I do it my way. And that's fine. Maybe your way is great. But I think, you know, if you're going to be coming into the fold of a, an independent business, obviously, you know, you don't own that business. So if you're a new agent, absorb it. And the takeaways aren't always good. You're also, I mean, I don't want to say good. The takeaways that you get you can also improve on. And the best leaders are ones that will say, hey, you know, you know, I'm, what have you ever tried this? You know, hey, no, why don't we? I mean, there's there's lots of look. I mean, you, um, you know, we're in, uh, extra, um, engaged in this activity today. This is a great, great, great way to to engage with the, with, with the trade at large. I think it's a good thing. Uh, it's the same applies to daily business too with your customers. Try new things, you know? And I think that, you know, the takeaways by job shadowing you know, they're not, it's, it's not perfect, but I think it certainly gives somebody a head start, if, especially if you're going to be new to the industry, if you're going to be potentially a new travel agent, it's quite daunting. You know, you don't have a book of business, you're going to be going into an agency and there will be expectations placed upon you. There should be, there will be. Obviously, a good leader will give you time to develop that. Um, sharing, sharing house accounts too, helping people with leads. I think that if you're a good leader and you're truly trying to grow your business, if you're bringing in a new person to the trade, you really have to foster and help. You know, it's not just a, this person's not just going to be turnkey and start delivering. Um, you do have to share leads, you know, uh, these kinds of things. If you're an agent that's got moderate, you know, to, to experience, um, you know, I think that, 
usually you'll probably have a different level of a conversation with the agency owner, given that you might have a you know certain amount of years and there could be different ways. But yeah, no, it's interesting. I think just be a sponge, absorb. For, for agents, um, you know, that are coming into the industry, new to the industry, one of the hardest things is to make the, the phone ring, right? To get those leads coming in. Um, it's great if you can partner with a company to where they can provide you leads. But, you know, for those uh, agents who, who don't have that, you know, um, there's so many avenues nowadays for marketing. How do, mm-hmm. how do you think the travel agents can reach more potential clients um, mm-hmm. nowadays or the best avenues to do that? Well, I think that utilizing your own personal resources is something that is critical. Um, in order to, if, if, if you're looking specifically at lead generation, again, going back to relationship management, just in even your own personal lives, not just in the business perspective, take your relationship seriously, you know, and if you're within a, let's say you're within a parent group, let's say you've got a family, you, you know, your kids are in activities, you, you go to various things, you've got maybe a church group that you belong to, maybe you've got, um, you're in some special service groups, there's all kinds of things that people are involved with in their daily lives. Um, and you know, if you're if you're certainly confident in your ability, um, you should see no reason why you wouldn't want to reach out to these groups. And nothing, we all know this. Um, referrals are, without a doubt, without a doubt, the absolute best way uh, to gain, uh, keep, and grow your business. Because nothing beats a great referral. Referral, you know, call call Modern. They're great. Your neighbor tells you that. You know, call Tim. He'll hook you up. And you know, sometimes people say, well. You know, have, I've used them 10 times and okay. And if people are like, oh, I don't want to go through the research and looking online. If my neighbor tells me Tim's a good guy, then I'm going to go. It's the same old thing. You don't, it is as simple as that, guys. Sometimes it really is, but you got to be respected. You know, you can't be viewed as, you know, kind of aggressive. It, it, you know, our, our, our role here is not to, to, to pinch people. Our role here is not to, you know, sure, it's always to, you know, we want to get the sale, but we have to be, we have to truly, truly be satisfied that, you know, that we're, we're getting as much out of the interaction uh, from the people as, as they are from us. And, you know, I think that look to your own backyard to, to, to generate your leads. A lot of people today, I think it's great. Social media is fantastic. You can get your referrals that way too in your own personal Facebook groups and, and, and Instagram and, and Twitter. And there's all kinds of ways to do it. But a lot of people are doing it that way, which is fantastic. But you might be in an industry now. And you're on LinkedIn, or you're, you know, and you're looking to segue and change into the travel industry. Well, assumably your contacts are, are, you know, bona fide people that you know, and it could be in your past industry. Well, guess what? Those people probably take vacations too. So yeah, I mean, you know, think outside the box. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. You know, generating leads, as you all know, you've you know built a business here, um, over a number of years, and you're at a point now where you, you've got an extremely solid reputation that, you know, you, you, you ought to be proud of and, and likely are. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, starting out is daunting. So I think hooking up with the right people to help you generate those leads. And if you do hook up with an agency that maybe can't provide you with tons of leads, you know, perhaps there's just, they've also got, you know, great ideas in, in the way to generate them too. So that's yeah, uh referrals. If everything starts somewhere. Your first client comes back happy. They know a lot of people. It's, you know. Absolutely. Referrals, referrals are everything, you know, um, and reviews as well, you know, mm-hmm. to, to get, to get, I know it's, it, it's, um, you know, sounds easy, but um, simple to do, but it, it just send your, send your uh, customers uh, re- referral, referral links, review links for them to fill out after they take their trip and share those, share those with, with your network, let them know everything that you're doing, you know? Um, so Todd, you've been in the industry, um, for, you know, since high school, basically since high Especially school. since high school. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I really have been. I, it was really a part-time thing through school and after, you know, I took some, you know, some sales and marketing courses and things like that were, you know, but it was not travel industry, uh, specifically, uh, targeted and I, yeah. That's that was my role. Yeah. So you you have seen, um, I'm sure you've been in a, a bunch of different agencies just throughout the year, seen mm-hmm. how they're run differently. Um, I'm interested as far as company culture, uh, looking at the, these different agencies, and you see a company culture that's thriving. What do you think they're doing right? And on the counter side, for ones that 
maybe does not seem as healthy, what are they doing wrong? So you're, st- you're talking now specifically to the retail travel agency? Retail travel right. agency, yes. Right. So when I look at successful agencies, and I, I do see many of them, I see large ones, we see small ones, um, we see, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So there's a culture if there's two people or 30 people. But, you know, I think the ones that I think that when I look at our, our uh, you know, we, have, we run a, you know, we run a billion dollar hotel company. And we've got retail partners throughout the globe. And when we look at our ones in the United States, uh, when we look at the history of the last, let's say five years, we, we know, we know the ones I, I, we have to, we, we have to, we look at the data. Yeah. But you know, I can pretty much tell you just in my head, um, we've, we've seen agencies grow because, you know, we, the ones that do, we know that the go-tos, you know, it, we do get 80% of our business uh, from, I would say t- less than 20%. Of the agencies, um, and those ones are the ones that engage and reach out, and we connect with the most. Stay in touch with your suppliers. Um, the relationship, not just with your customer, but with your suppliers, again, is paramount. Just like a referral, you're not getting anywhere in this industry unless you uh, don't foster your relationships within tour operator BDMs, DMCs. Um, in some cases, depending on what your specialty is, you know, you likely know way more than I do in terms of perhaps it's river cruising. Maybe it's just the airlines. Maybe you've got a, a tremendous book of business with corporate travelers that you've got the tricks of the trades through consolidators. And I don't know, you've got relationships, you know where to go um, and, and good for you. But I think that the culture that, 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 that I see um, with the agencies that, that did to do most really do speak highly of their employees, like the agency owners, they are supportive of their agents. Uh, even in private conversations, they're 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 proud of them. They they talk about um, ways to engage them more because you know a good agency owner. And if you're an agent and you have a, a good employer, and maybe you're you're just uh, in in a situation where you're transitioning, you're going to be home based, and you're going to work on a on 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 some sort of an arrangement with with uh, you know with splits and things like that. You still have to you know, be able to work within a culture that's fair uh, and, and, and equitable. Um, so I, I think that, yeah, I, I, I really believe that uh, the ones that I've seen are, are they're, they're inclusive, they're, they're diverse, they, they are, they're on point with what today's world is. You can't do, you know, it, it's, it's a new world, you know, you're transitioning. Also, um, you know, um, being with uh, uh, the, the ones that I see successful are ones that are, are not sitting on laurels. They're, they're advancing and doing new things and they're trying to innovate and it doesn't always work and that's okay. I mean, you know, but they're trying new things and trying new things is something that's going to continue to take you and your employees with you. Like if I'm a new agent going into uh, identify a, a group that I would like to work with, I would like to see, you know, what is, what, what do you see? You know, how do you see the next five years? Are you investing in technologies? Are, are things going to, you know, is lead generation, you know, going to be something that's important to you? You know, if it is to me that I need leads and I know that my, my group is supporting it. So innovative is important. Um, honesty, the integrity, the reputation is, is very, I look to that in, in almost all times. When I see our top performing agents and agencies, they're, we're in touch with them all the time. And we share a relationship first before anything else. So there's a, there's a trust element there. So that's really the glaring part is, is, you know, we talk in sometimes in our company and, um, you know, if it's uh, so-and-so from ABC Travel, hypothetically called and there's something going on, we know how important that is. Not that everyone's not important. But to get to the level where you're super important, you have to do something right. And that means staying in touch with those suppliers, just work them. And you guys are great examples of, 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 of really taking relationships seriously. And, you know, it's not just about the business, you know, it's, it's just about the relationship too. Yeah. You, you um, said something that, that I wanted to highlight. You mentioned that the leaders, the, the the great leaders, are the ones that have you know great company culture. Talk highly of their employees or mm-hmm. talk highly of their team, and that's something that I feel is so important because if you're having a conversation and talking down about your people, then the person you're talking to in their head, they're like, well, if they're talking negatively about the people that they're supposed to be close to, what do they say about me? Mm-hmm. What do they say? So. Um, I think as a leader, it's so important to build up, to spread the positivity 
you know, no one's perfect, right? Everyone needs growth areas. Everybody, um, there's areas to grow, but mm -hmm. I think posi positivity goes a long way, especially in today's in, in today's um, market and society. Enthusiasm and passion, what are the are so contagious within a culture? Uh, when you feel good after having a conversation with somebody. You know, perhaps it's a coworker. You know, and you're just trying to, you know, navigate through something. Could be a minor thing. Could be, and 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 there are certain things, and that sometimes maybe we're all guilty of. Sometimes is somebody may ask for some assistance with something or a question, and you might think like, you know, well, that's pretty easy. Well, it might be to us, but it might be a super deep question from their angle. It might be something that maybe we take for granted as being something we all know. But so the old thing that there's no such thing as bad questions too is very important too for for a, for, for a leader or for an agency owner. And, and, and I think for that perspective is, you know, fostering that too. You know, agents, they're, they're, look, we have a lot of acronyms in this business. You know, sometimes I say to myself, I was on a call last week and I felt embarrassed and I saw this acronym 10 times and I said to myself, what, what is this? So I said to our inside sales coordinator, and I said, Chanel, you know, like, what does this even mean? You know? And so it's like, it's so simple in the end. And it's like, oh, you know, like, but I think that just being able as an employer and as the employee to, to have this understanding that you, there, there's, there's no, the, you, you should never be afraid to ask a question or to, to go to an area. I mean, difficult conversations are always going to be had. Sure. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, it's true. I mean, they just have to, you have to have open, you know, it's, it's like an open door. It's, it, it really is. It's, you know, and, and I think if you, if that environment is good, the business will come and your customers, our customers, mutual clients, they will feel that. They will feel that, man, this person really, this enthusiasm isn't great, is great, you know? Um, and, and they really, you know, they, they, they will, it'll be a pleasure for them to, 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 to refer and recommend and call these people. They're great. They love what they do. They're knowledgeable. I mean, it's different when things are so regimented and black and white and, and rigid and travel's fun, guys, right? We're not selling, you know, thankfully, you know, we're not selling, you know, medical equipment that is, you know, very, you know, highly technical. And, you know, I'm sure they have fun too, but I mean, let's be honest, we're selling the best stuff in the world, man. We're selling dreams. Like this is just, and that's not even cliche. That's literally what we're selling. So I say have fun with it. Absolutely. And, and it's always a great opportunity too. When somebody asks a question to take a look at your process mm -hmm. to, especially as like an employer, as a leader to say, okay, if they don't know this, is there something that we could have introduced in our process to help teach this or to engage in a way? So it's like, it's always that opportunity to improve and to get better and to, to improve your systems. Mm -hmm. Because you said it could be something so simple that it's like, oh, actually we didn't train on this. Maybe we should mm -hmm. train on a small thing. Maybe we should make this part of our system to improve as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to bring the ego into it and saying like, oh, they should know this or this is so simple. Great. It's absolutely true. Yeah, no, you're hitting the nail on the head. And I think that that's your, well, now we're going into some deeper things that I think true with true, with, with, with true, you know, when you, when you, when you really dig deep and really want to get to a point where it's going to be, you know, provide and bring about profound change and development and growth, you kind of have to go to those places. And you notice how a lot of these things don't have anything to do with travel. We're talking now more about personalities and people and development and personal growth, you know, the product or service, you know, it's, it's incredible. You have to have that product element. You do have to have the knowledge, but in order for it to work, it's, it's a different, we're in a different frame here. It's not just about what we're selling. It's about our interactions, not only with our customers, but with the people we work with and our employers and, you know, things like that. So I really, you know, I, I think this industry is full of really bright people. A lot of people got into the industry. You know, so you'll think I love to travel and I, I've done a lot of like educational things like and go to community colleges or schools where, you know, um, uh, they, they, you know, in recruitments and, you know, why did you want to get into this travel? Well, I love to travel. Well, okay. I mean, that's, that should be the case, but you know, there's more to it than that. I mean, you've got to get dig, digging deep. Like you, 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 you talked about that, Chris, getting to the core of, 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 of them being able to be comfortable. And, and that's when you start getting to the good stuff, like, because, you know, you're uh, an, a, an agency now that has, you know, six, six, several years of growth and um, a great reputation, but you're not just sitting around. I mean, you're doing different things. Look at, you know, again, referring to this um, uh, activity today, but and I'm sure you've got lots of other ones planned. And, you know, that's the way your employees, you know, the last thing you want is good people to leave. 
you don't want that. Why would you want you want people to be happy? And you, obviously, professional development is part of your world. I know that just because I know, but I also know that the agencies, going back to that question, the first question, um, the ones that are investing in these familiarizations, um, giving them allowances to travel, um, and also just bringing in the, the BDMs and the, the, the tour company, uh, the the hotel companies to do deep dives. I'm not talking about just a, a touch scratching webinar, just on, on the basics. I'm talking about perhaps a very deep dive two hour session just on one specific destination where it might be really digging deep. And that's the only way. Maybe it's not everybody can just jump on a plane every day and see a destination for, you know, we, we have to do work sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's lots of that. And I know you guys are big on that. I mean, you know, you guys love your, you know, educating your agents and you've got go-tos for various things. And, Obviously, we appreciate the business we get from you very much, and uh, I'm sure you've got lots of suppliers that feel the same way. Thank you. Just to talk about the the travel industry, you know, um, what do you see? You know, after 2020, what do you see the future of the travel industry in the next five years? You know, I see. If you asked me this question seven months ago, I would have given you a positive answer, truly believing the answer. But I wouldn't give it, I wouldn't have been overzealous. A lot of people were like, you know, right from day one, like they somehow knew everything. Well, we don't have crystal balls, none of us do. And we speculate, we have to. But what we do know now, and the difference between six months ago and now, and I'm sure you can attest to this, is now we have data, we have science behind the fact that, and we've talked about this guys before, I think on on prior calls, is that Now we know 100% that this will be a lasting, profound recovery without a doubt, without a doubt. And uh, the business is coming in and it does not have to come in for today, for travel, tomorrow, for us to feel good about this industry. It's excellent that people are booking for July 2022, a destination wedding. There's no better sign in the world. It's great that they're booking for next week too. Sure, we want it. We want it now too. But you know what? We will take anything we can get that shows the confidence that people want to do this and uh, it travel in general. And so I just think that it's hard for me to actually say, but, you know, you know, the people say, you know, we're going to come out of this stronger than I remember in the very beginning and we were all, everyone was just going to be bigger and better than ever. And we're like, it, when it was fluid, it was so hard to grasp that because we're saying, wow, we're decimated, but look at it. Like this is actually there. It's going to come. Like it's going to be massive. and. It's just incredible. And that's just talking about my area, particularly, which is the area of all-inclusive. Um, our resorts tend to be the beach all-inclusive holidays. And thankfully, this is an area that is really quite, you know, it's one of the first now to, re- uh, to, to rebound because people are looking at kind of getting on that, you know, two, three-hour flight, all-inclusive, beach holiday. I'm not putting it off. We're going to do it. This is going to apply for everything. It's going to apply for cruising. It's going to apply for the bucket list of getting into seeing, you know, you, you know, people that, you know, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Now I am not going to come. <laughs> I just want to rephrase that. But there are many people that will want to do that. And uh, there's bucket list items, zip lining in Costa Rica, my neighbor said, I'm not putting it off. I'm doing it. You know, and this guy across the street from me, he's never been on all inclusive before. And he's been somehow he's got this zip lining thing in his head. And his wife said, she, he's definitely not doing it. He's 75 and I'm not going to let him, but he thinks he is. And I think that we're seeing that. And I think you are too. So I think that I think Ed Bode's terrific for the industry. There's some unfortunate things here that perhaps some agencies, um, you know, maybe a bit of attrition. Some people might have just decided to close small agencies. Perhaps they were getting close to maybe a retirement age or they didn't have maybe a new agent that maybe was starting and aspiring and you know, the last year has been difficult. They've had to go maybe back to another job that they were trying to do. So look, it's not all, let's can't sugarcoat here. It, you know, you, not everyone is going to love this, but I think for established agencies that uh, are attracting people that have, you know, moderate to, to uh, you know, uh, enhanced experience, but even a newcomer going into a red environment, you can still, you can absolutely make a go of this and it could become a fantastic career choice. But again, you know, we have seen that some had a hard time. I mean, you know, lots of cancellations, commissions were rolling in. I mean, you know, I know, unfortunately, some agents that were doing a part time that just couldn't make it work. So they may or may not come back to it. Right. But, you know, I think that in general, man, I feel so, so pumped. And it's almost like this new 
ener- you know, we're, we're, we're re-energized because we know that more people now are sharing that desire to actually travel. There's a lot of people that say, oh, I always wanted to do this, but we'll see, or I'll do it later. They're not waiting, man. They're doing it. They're going to pull the trigger and they're going to do it more because look, nobody knows what tomorrow brings. We see that all the time. Uh, this situation that we're in, you know, while it's extremely serious, it's not forever. And that's what I keep telling myself. And I hate the term new normal. I think you guys and I have talked that. <laughs> the new normal for me is going back to the way it was. And that's the day, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I know that there are going to be some, let's say, elements that may stick. Okay. And there are, I'm just being a bit facetious. But my point is that, that I will not um, lend to this, that this is good. This is the way it is now. It's always going to be like this. It's definitely not always going to be like this. Enhanced uh, safety measures, fantastic. Protocols with sanitation, all for it. These are some positive things now that have come from this uh, global pandemic, uh, for sure. And we welcome those things because that make you know it, it's very, very important and critical. And that's an improvement. And that's that's a win. Uh, but you know, the human condition is not meant to socially distance for you know till till for all time here okay we're going to get back you know to 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 where the way it should be and it's going to be sooner than later well some of us may you know depending on where we live may you know maybe a little bit further away than others but it's going to come and i'll tell you we're going to be enjoying that like nobody's business all of us will collectively yeah, i agree and what do you think um you know, not only from what you've seen on sort of the resort side of like, you know, what are they doing to take advantage of this upcoming boom, but what can agencies do to kind of capitalize on, you know, what this sort of this transition of people really are, they're sick and tired of being locked up. They're sick and tired. They want to get out. They want to do something. Mm -hmm. Well, what can they do is I would, I would tell people that are thinking of traveling to book it because fares aren't, it's not going to be a free for all of cheap prices in the marketplace. I mean, you know, I say the term cheap, inexpensive, you know, I always learn to say different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, pricing, I, I don't think things are going to go through the roof, but we have to be honest, right now there's limited capacities, right? Things are coming back, thankfully, but travel's not free. And so, you know, sometimes people wait in looking for deals. If you find a price now, lock in, get it in your calendar. If I'm an agent today and I got people kicking the tires, I'm encouraging them to say, hey, look, you're tired of this as much as we are. If you can lock into a decent price that you're happy with and a destination and resort or trip that you want to go on with all of the other advantages today, you know, we've got these cancel for any reason waivers. We've got, we've got better insurance coverages that have come from this, that have evolved. You have really limited risk now. Whereas before it was, you know, before this, you know, stuff hit the fan, uh, you know, it was a different animal. We had to, you guys know more than anybody sorting through all of these bookings and rebookings and refunds. I mean, that's something we never, ever care to go to again. Um, it was very difficult for the whole industry at large and, and and very difficult. But for now, hey, if you're looking at going next February, next June, look at it now, book it, get it on the books, man, and have it in your calendar or something to look forward to. I mean, I think that, you know, that's something to do. Obviously, not, with aggra- not aggressively, but certainly I would recommend it. I think some people, that would be the one thing I would say to the agents that are looking to kind of kickstart it is that, you know, reach out to your, your book, you know, your client base and staying in touch with them is very, very important. Um, out of sight, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You don't always have to get in touch with somebody to offer them something specific, just to let them know that you're there. Mm-hmm. You just want to have a chat. You know, there's no harm in chatting. And it could be somebody that's just learning uh, or learning, just just starting to think about a big vacation and didn't really realize, hey, look, there's great prices for that resort right now for next July. Oh, okay. Well, what are they? I and mean, we could get you in something really great. And, you know, you've got some great flexibility if you need to change the dates or, you know, people don't really know. That. Again, goes back to maybe consumers are certainly aware of this. I mean, we as tra- uh, partners in the trade and agents, we will know this, but what, some customers are not really aware of that. They know oh, it's too risky. Well, it's actually not. It's actually not. If I told you, it's really not that risky to book a trip now. So I think that's something that I would do. Other than that, I think it's hard to know exactly, like depending on what area that they're looking at. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, big, like these round the world trips and things like, I know people that are looking at planning now really big expeditions, like one month, two months, you know, these are, these are big consultations. You guys know better than me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing right now um, a lot of the wedding dates in in early, um, well, first quarter, second quarter of 2022, they're booking up, they're booking up the availability for, for a lot of these weddings that, that we're uh, booking in the summertime, in the fall, 
the hotels are selling out because of the 50 yeah. percent occupancy. So I agree with you hundred percent book it, get it. Yes. In, get in the calendar and then have something to look forward to for sure. Um, I'm interested, you know, it could be professionally, it could be personally, but what was your biggest lesson from 2020? <sighs> so my biggest lesson, and I'm on a slightly different because more on the supplier side being the hotel company. So we were dealing with, you know, for us might be slightly, well, well, you also dealing with vendors and customers. We were dealing with retailers and we were dealing with supplier, um, uh, uh, wholesalers. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's slightly different, but I, our, our frustrations and, and, and takeaways probably are similar. Um, is that, you know, as bad as it is and as bad as it looks, it's it, it's not it's not it's not forever. Like I, it, it's it was really hard. Some days was very 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 difficult um, because you were having very there was very little positive positive conversations happening in those times. And when you do see, you know, sometimes during that fluid time in that very first when it, essentially the industry was completely shut down, you know. It was hard to listen to people say, oh, it's going to be fine. And you hear these people say, oh, not today it isn't. So I was a bit, you know, I was kind of taken in a bit like personally struggling that, you know, this is, this is crap. Like, I, can we recover? No, knowing we would deep down. But at the time, you're looking at the mountain to climb and you're saying, you know, so maybe too much time, you know, maybe was kind of spent thinking on that, you know, not after hours more than during but just, you know, letting it really, you know, rack our head and my brain about realizing there's nothing I could do, really. And there's nothing, you know, collectively, we just all do our best. Like at the time, you know, putting a lot of pressure, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and our organizations. But, you know, my takeaway would be like, I think everybody handled it. They tried to do it as best they could. And, you know, governments and customers and tour companies and hotel operators. And, you know, it just... I think I probably would have spent less time thinking about ways to get through it and more just about just actually, you know, doing just the work and, um, okay, this is a crap job right now and make no mistake about it. It was not a great, it, I'm sure you guys can attest to, like it was, it was difficult. And so my biggest takeaway would be not harboring and not, 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 not you know, there were a lot of times spent where I was like, ah, oh, you know, what could I do, you know? I got to agree. I mean, that was, <laughs> for me, I, I spent way too much time thinking about things that I couldn't control, you know, and uh, it, yeah. it's, it's draining, you know, it, it really is. Um, I know we, uh, we love blue diamond. Um, you guys are an amazing brand. Can you share with um, our listeners, our agents out there? Why, what makes blue diamond a great partner? Well, I, I think that, you know, the, the great thing about our all-inclusive space, and again, I've, as I highlighted earlier, we're primarily in the all-inclusive space. We do have uh, a small e, uh, EP boutique brand called Mystique, but generally speaking, we're in the, the Caribbean, Central American destinations in uh, Mexico, uh, catering to that all-inclusive market. And I think one thing, just if I could, you know, as we're speaking to primarily a North American audience here today, is that we are a North American company. We're owned uh, by, by North Americans. Uh, we're designed primarily for source markets uh, between the United States, Canada, and the UK are our, our primary source markets. So, um, you know, we love all markets. We're, we're present everywhere in the world, but, you know, our, our, we're, we're, our, our unique selling propositions, if you will, on property are kind of designed for this market. So, we're, we're, you know, we're built by North Americans. For North Americans, I'd like to say we've got some really unique propositions on property, all the comforts of home. We've got our, you know, our sports bar experience, our Sports event guarantee where we guarantee major, um, you know, sports programming, uh, you know, throughout uh, the day and the night. And we've got all our comfort foods, and burgers and nachos. And we've got our legendary Planet Hollywood brand that we're developing all inclusive resorts. We have one in Costa Rica now and two, the adult scene and the Planet Hollywood in Cancun that just opened in Custom Harris. And I got to jump You in. were there. The, the best burger I've ever had at an all inclusive resort, actually, out of the country. The, the, the there you go. I've ever, I've ever had. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. So as Tim is referencing is uh, we're home to Guy Fieri's uh, celebrity chef, Guy Fieri's burger joint, and we have them in all our planet Hollywoods and it's cool. And it's included. Yes. It's included in the all inclusive. And um, so I think that this, um, it's an iconic brand that we're growing with a great uh, planet Hollywood, uh, Hollywood memorabilia. 
Um, so I think that we really do cater our Royalton brand. We've bought our Royalton Chic, which is adult only. So when we look at Blue Diamond Resorts as our umbrella brand and all of our family of brands that I just kind of touched on there, um, we really do cater to, to specifically um, uh, a United States, uh, uh, an American client. You know, we serve uh, USDA selected above uh, char grilled steaks in our steakhouse. So, you know, we're not serving the mystery meat. It's very difficult to get it. And now I know you, you boys are in Texas where our audience might not all be, but, you know, don't be trying to pass off something that's not steak to be. So it's not happening. So, uh, and also going back, wellness is also important. We're talking about our steaks, but we're also catering to, you know, people, there's a lot of dietary restrictions today, a lot more. Uh, have uh, developed. I mean, we certainly cater to uh, gluten-free, uh, vegetarian, um, vegan uh, uh, diets. Uh, we've got uh, an ability to really, you know, register that uh, when they when they arrive. They meet with uh, somebody on property that can go through some of those restrictions that they have. Obviously, they always have to be careful as well. But we do a very very good job with that. So I think you know our product is really well rounded. We've got for adult only. We've got our adult only with Edge and our Royalty Chic. Uh, we've got our Hideaway uh, Royaltons, which is for a more discerning adult experience, a little more reserved. Uh, we've got our Planet Hollywood, which is obviously an iconic lifestyle brand. Uh, so we do have quite a bit going on uh, with us. And I think that when we look at, you know, our, 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 our comforts of home, you know, we have lightning fast Wi-Fi everywhere in all of our resorts, right down to the beach, you'll be able to stream. Uh, we have smart TVs in the rooms. We've got real elements that I think the audience loves. We have our dream beds, which are a great high throat dump bedding. Uh, we have king and queen beds in our resort. So we're not having like single and twin because today's standard, certainly in the United States, does not lend well to, you know, double beds and twin beds and single beds. So we have king beds. We always have a king bed in a room. And if there's a pullout in that room, there'll be like a queen size pullout or there'll be two queen beds in the room. For a family of four, that's ideal. So we've done things, I think, that maybe, I mean, we've got great competitors. Look, it all it makes us better. We have terrific competitors. Um, and we're always trying to keep up with each other, which I think is fantastic. We challenge each other. And there's never been a better time, I think, to go to an all-inclusive. If we go back 25 years ago, all-inclusives were not offering the array of the, 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 you know, the culinary experiences that they're offering today. And that's due to healthy competition. And that's why we're in the place that we're at, where people now can go. There are people that go to all-inclusives now that would never have gone. 20 years ago, just because they weren't sure, you know, you know, is it going to be a good experience? Like I'd rather go out and explore and do things and, you know, but you're getting great, great product. I mean, you're getting fantastic. And we invest so much in our chefs and, you know, we're talking about wellness, you know, green juices in the morning, you can get that, you know, kale smoothie, if you want it. Uh, I, you can I, had a, I had a smoothie every morning at Planet Hollywood. You and did? A gym there is, it's next level. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, really, really nice. And you mentioned uh, uh, vegan. We have our, our resident vegan here, Chris. So we got to send him down there to uh, to taste the vegan food. Chris, you got to do it up. You know, you know, we, we, you know they're, they're doing all kinds of really, you know, cool things there. And we talk about it quite regularly. And, you know, they're not satisfied even with the program yet because um, they want, you know, they're always looking at new areas too. And if you look too in our all day dining, for example, I was noticing the last time I was there, well, in a pasta station, you know, thankfully now this is like a show cooking so it's safe now because it's not we're serving ourselves they're doing the sauce and whatever i saw things like um gluten-free pasta options spelt pasta we also saw konjac noodle pasta which is completely uh, uh it's a root product and regular pasta i also saw uh sugar-free dessert table uh where they actually help you and so a lot of people, you don't have to be diabetic to avoid sugar. A lot of people are, are trying to cut refined sugar from diets. Um, that's part of wellness today. Um, so they, we did have those, which I was quite interested in. That was quite cool and, and a good and a and a decent a decent thing to, to look at. So I think that that's something that is is, is you know very very critical. And um, you know they're really this is a it's a growing sector uh, 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 and and it's an opportunity. And so all of these. Um, you know, societal changes, they're here to stay and they're happening for a reason. So you're, you're in or you're out. You, you, you know, people like that big steak, sure, but there's just as many now that are looking at uh, making other lifestyle choices. And it's up to us really to cater to that. You know, you look at stuff like um, meatless options, you know, um, 
it's it's happening. I mean, you know, we're you know the, the Beyond Meat company. I know that some uh, that they've they've grown and trying to expand their products and things like that. In our resorts, um, they have not gone to that level. They, we've, obviously, we have things like veggie burgers and all those kinds of things, but they're also looking at ways of bringing in some of the branded stuff for people that might be you know interested because this is you know for them to go on vacation, they really do need to know. You know, I mean, I have um. Um, uh, someone in our family who's celiac and has to be very, very careful when they travel. And, uh, you know, they really need to know. So, you know, to know that who knew that there was a difference between quinoa and couscous, but it's like <laughs> night and day to me, I like both, but to a celiac, one is completely a no, no. So, um, these are kinds of things that were good. And we have a corporate chef that, you know, super open-minded always wants to hear from the customers, even if it's bad. It's never bad, but if it is, we always let them know and uh, it trickles down and we have open dialogue. So yeah, I, I think that, you know, those kinds of things are really important. And, and I think, you know, I know the question we've gotten off base a little bit. We do try to cater all of our friends and to people. And we've got things like our, our water uh, features are amazing. Our lazy rivers, we've got flow riders, at some of our resorts, which is a wave runner experience of 24 hour room service. So we, we really try to kind of keep it, you know, fun you know we do a lot of stuff really in order to, to 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 keep our you know we love our repeat clients we've got our diamond club which is an upgraded amenity package and our star class which is always great for, for agents to look at for mutual clients is uh, upgraded experience with um, dedicated pool areas our uh, dedicated bar a uh, room location um things like that so we've got a lot of really cool things to offer and not to mention our hotels thankfully are super modern i mean we're a 10 year old hotel company only um and since that period you know we've grown immensely to almost uh you know 46 properties in in 10 countries and over 15,000 hotel rooms now uh we've done that in a very short period of time so in order to do that we've done it fairly quickly, our stuff is still really modern. So we don't have, we, well, we have a few hotels aging, I say aging, maybe six or seven years old that need a light refresh. These are not hotels that need to be gutted. So we don't really have properties that are, you know, super old and need tons of work. We have hotels that need regular refreshments. Uh, we're doing one right now. Uh, the Royalton Sheik in Punta Cana um, is undergoing um, uh, an enhancement that will be ready for the fall. Right now, it's due to occupancy. It is uh, temporarily closed, and we've taken an opportunity to to upgrade this particular hotel. It's been very busy since 2014, so it's had a number of years, six, six seven years under its belt now, and it's gotten a bit of wear and tear. So we're thankful that that hotel is still physically a very modern building. It just needs some it needs some, it needs a little more than lipstick, but it needs, it needs some attention. So we're fortunate. I'm fortunate to be able to represent a chain that is modern and generally new. And we've got good new stuff and you guys know our products. So for me, it's a pleasure. Now talk to me in 10 years. Now, <laughs> so that sells 20 years old. Maybe I have to move on, but right now well, I'm super happy. With your recent partnership, you guys are raising the level even more. Would you just talk a little bit about that partnership? So excellent point. Yeah. So we entered in in February, we announced an agreement um, with uh, with Marriott International uh, to join their autograph collection of independent hotels. It's a very, very uh, busy time for us right now. These transitions are, are, there's a lot involved, as you can imagine, I'm learning a ton. Uh, and what this basically means is um, that uh, we will be, uh, if, 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 if agents are familiar with the autograph collection, these are not the actual Westons and the Marriott's. These are a collection of hotels that have joined the Marriott portfolio as franchisees and as through distribution agreements to, to, to excise, uh, to access, um, you know, Marriott is the largest hotel company in the world. There's a lot of outreach in areas of, 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 of the world that we don't typically have a lot of coverage or gain a lot of business from. They're very, very strong. For us here in the United States, when we look at our source markets, our three big ones, still very heavily driven with our wholesale partnerships and with our retail trade uh, via them and also direct. I mean, we know that that distribution will still be very, very similar. Uh, we still maintain, obviously, ownership of all of our hotels. We still will have our relationships with our friends at Modern the same way. The distribution sometimes could change a little bit, but in general, we think that the channels of distribution here will be very similar. But where it does, and you hit the nail on the head, is becoming part of something like the autograph collection by Marriott it does come with obviously um, certain stipulations and conditions uh, um, uh, of, of, of levels of consistencies and product development. And so for us being really a company that's 10 years old, we grew so fast and we, our core business is tour operating. Uh, we were started by a Canadian company, the Sunwing Travel Group, uh, uh, 2011, 
who venturing into this 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 brave new world of, of being into this uh, all inclusive space. And our core business kind of grew. Now our hotel business is almost dead because now we've grown so much that uh, we're getting to that next level. And to get to that next level, having an association with a, an iconic brand uh, like Marriott International to kind of help in certain ways. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a great it's a great match. We maintain our management of our deal of our hotels. We maintain our relationships, and we're able to you know get into uh, an area of clientele. Their Bonvoy program is massive, uh, which is fantastic, uh, and uh, I think we have access to that too. And certainly, agents today we know agents that you know retailers are booking all different ways today. You know, booking through wholesalers, you're booking direct, you're booking through the chains. You know, there's always an option, um, and uh, you know we're 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 available and uh, ready to do business. We've talked a lot about the importance of, of knowledge and relationships. So for agents who are interested in learning more about, you know, this partnership, about Blue Diamond, you know, where should they go? And for those that are interested in building a relationship and maybe mm-hmm. they are vaguely familiar with Blue Diamond, but really don't know where to start, who should mm-hmm. they reach out to? What, what, what can they do to help build that well, relationship? Well, they can contact us through travel professionals on our website at um, bluediamondresorts.com. For those in the United States, there are some uh, different options available um, through um, uh, uh, a website called bdrewards.com, boydavidrewards.com. They can access um, all of our business development professionals throughout the United States by state. So they can start by reaching out to a BDM, certainly for me directly, if you call, you know, if you're listening to this from other locales like Canada or perhaps even Europe, myself, no problem at all. But I think a good place to start for our, our U.S. Uh, uh, agents would be that bdagentrewards.com and they can easily connect with anybody, including myself and start a relationship. And again, there are no bad questions. And I'll tell you, we get agents asking, things, you know, um, sometimes they, they feel bad on oh, my client. We had one yesterday where the client said embarrassing, not it was, no, it wasn't an embarrassing question. It was strange request. And I think, oh man, what is this one going to be? And it was literally a a high school grad trip with some parents. The absolute must was a basketball who had the resort had to have basketball. Didn't have to be a full court, but they needed to have some one-on-one time and it had to be. And if it, if they didn't have it, they were going to buy one and they were going to ship it by FedEx to the resort. It was so important to these people to have this. And I'm thinking, holy cow, like this is, this is, you get some really, you get some doozy. So, uh, we answer the question and now it raised an issue now with operations. Well, you know what? It's really not a big deal. If we don't have it at some of the resorts, which we don't have that at all of them, why don't we just get it? It doesn't cost that much. So, you know, don't ever think that there's a bad question and reaching. And you know what? Sometimes your best relationships are formed by a very simple interaction. You could just be reaching out to a general help desk. Hey, look, I got a question. What time does this something, something close? Like, and if, the, you know, the response is good, say, oh, that, that, that person is really helpful. I'm going to ask them again. And the next thing you know, you're having regular co- connections with those people. And great agents, you know, are, are communicating. We have pre-arrival checklists on all of our resorts where a lot of agents don't know we have that. So on our signature lines as business development team, we do have a pre-arrival form where a travel agent can simply fill out and send to a highlighted email. The Jones are coming. It's their anniversary. Can we do something? Could be that they send something nice, little amenity to the room. They might just wrap it. Happy anniversary on their door, and when they get there, they will acknowledge them. Oh, we understand it's your anniversary. You know, people love that, and so utilize that. You know, I mean, you know, they know it's the travel agent behind it. They're gonna be like, "Wow, man!" They'd be like, "Hey, Tim, that was great, man. When we got there, you know, we have things." I mean, there's little things mean the most, as we all know. It's the little touches that keep people coming back. You know, we can buy our products from anywhere. We can shop where we want. We can get our groceries, whatever. But, you know, you probably go and maybe you've got to go to where you get your cars from, you know, you know, car salesman. Great. Oh, I don't want to be sold any extra warranties. I just want my car. Well, I got a guy that I go to and he knows. <laughs> don't even go down there. When I go into the second, the, the, the second level, when you get the car, when they try and sell you the dust, the dust, I'm like, don't waste your time. Let's just talk about, let's just talk about baseball. Okay, yep. Do you need to have me in here for any amount of time? Because I'm not spending any money. But uh, I think that uh, the best interactions, I think, are, you know, take advantage of that. And most, you know what, guys, most agents are doing that today, but do it more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Todd, thank you so much for joining us on yep. the podcast. This has been a great interview. And we just uh, appreciate uh, your friendship. And again, agents, go to BDA agents. 
It's BD Boy David. It's just simply BD Agent with no S rewards.com. Uh, and they can cer- certainly sign up. That's free to join if you're not part of the uh, uh, Blue Diamond Agent Rewards. Uh, join it. It's free. And that uh, it doesn't matter how you book uh, our products. You're able to earn points to convert to cash. Uh, and it's a great education piece, too. You can learn a lot about our resorts there. If you need to connect, you can with a business development person. Happy to do that. And, uh, you know, I look forward to continuing to grow with, uh, with you guys. I really appreciate the, the business and the relationship. And uh, we've, uh, for, 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 the, for the listeners here, our two companies have really grown immensely. <laughs> I mean, immensely. And we have done a tremendous amount of business together. And it's really only because of, I think, the, the relationship, the trust factor that we can reach each other. We're available for each other. Product is good, sure, and, and our services that Modern offers are great, yes, but it boils down now to the, the, the depth and understanding of the organizations, and um, I think that, uh, you know, we couldn't, we wouldn't be here without our relationship with with, with you guys uh, at the level we're at as, as we've grown in 10 years from zero to this, and, you know, we needed people like you, and we continue to, so thank you for the opportunity.